Hi, good afternoon. I'm Janet, and this is Janet's Corner. Almost said Jungle Janet. Anyhow, uh, last week we talked about foreshortening the body. Um, let's see, Mantegna, at the early Renaissance, a good example of foreshortening uh, the uh, Christ uh, in a reclining um, position and painted from the feet up. And anyway, we, I forgot to mention exercises uh, to a few sketches um, of people sitting, walking, uh, two, two to five minute sketches, either building up the mass or with forms, um, stick figures, starting out with stick figures, that's a good one, and then moving into like a 20 minute uh, a sketch or study, should I say, studies usually are a little bit longer, a drawing, um, about a 20 minute, uh, an hour drawing, whenever you get all the proportions in it, um, the proportions, uh, the line direction, and throwing in the shadows, the direct lighting, indirect lighting. Direct lighting is a little bit easier to work with in the beginning. Uh, today we're going to talk about the hands and the feet. And the hands being very, com uh, sometimes um, uh, complicated. Uh, a lot of different things going on with the fingers and the thumb and one of the more difficult things to draw of the body. And next week I'll talk about the portraits and mapping out the face and hopefully we'll get into the profile or the three-quarter turn. And then today with the hands and the feet, the feet usually covered up with shoes and with the hands they're usually open you can see them uh, you, and the older we get older i get the more bonier my hands appear so then it's pretty easier for me to, pretty easy for me to see the bone structure underneath the skin and in some books that i've seen uh, they put together the hands with um, shapes cylinders, looking at them as cylinders, and when the hands reaching out towards you, the fingers are not going to be this length. They're going to be very, very short and appear like one circle over another. This is supposed to be the middle finger, uh, the thumb. I just uh, was up here sketching earlier. And anyway, um, it, Practicing with your hand in the mirror, drawing your hand really hard to hold it still. And I found myself moving around whenever I was sketching uh, my hand holding a glass. I still, and I got the simple lines down and then I can go back and refine these lines. I can move the lines around. My thumb, is usually, it's not that straight and it'll come out, the knuckle will come out about halfway down, uh, right about there. And the hand, uh, proportion-wise to the face, the heel of the hand placed on the chin, and then laying the hand on the face, the fingertips will usually hit right above the eyebrow, and I noticed in even my drawings and paintings, sometimes I get the hands too small and working bigger. And, and a really good way to work bigger, treat them as a mitten um, and then go in and, and carve out the hand. Uh, the mitten here, I started out with a circle, knowing that my hand is going to fit in this circle and then it, breaking it down. There, my thumb and then my fingers come over here and then back down to the palm of the hand. And talking about the palm of the hand, the palm of the hand is about the same uh, 
uh, same proportion if I put my fingers, let's see, we'll get this spoon as a, to me measure proportions. The palm of my hand is about, oh, this distance, and if I bring it up here, it's about the same, from here to here and here to here. About the same, similar. And then up here, I practiced with a fine charcoal, a lot of fun to draw big and, and um, easier to work from pictures if you want to take a picture of your hand. That flattens your hand out. I mean, uh, flattens your hand out. Uh, the picture, to, it, it will flatten shapes and much easier to draw from a photo than um, life because uh, Practicing from life is very, very good. I mean, it is a very important aspect. Uh, there's things that you see from life that you don't see in a photograph. And looking at my hand, um, say holding a glass, being able to see my hand through that glass, this is what I was playing with earlier. Uh, holding a paintbrush, um, holding a baseball. I didn't have a baseball, holding an apple. Noticing how the hand falls around the apple. And if I'm holding it out like this, I can, I can pretty much see the fingertips and that's about it. Maybe the palm of the hand. Much less so if I actually had a good sized baseball. And Therefore, we're, we're shortening the fingers. We're not going to be able to see the length of the fingers. As for the feet, a lot of times we're looking down on our feet. Yes, we can see the tops of our feet, but to uh, look at somebody else's feet, um, I'm going to see mostly the top. The foot, is, to simplify the foot, triangle. And up here, toes. Oh, we're gonna do some huge toes. And from here, I can cut down this shape. And come up. And let's see, the toes are a little bit long. And then we, um, if we're doing the foot from the front view, Big toe sits there, and small toes. You can move the lines backwards, and then we're going to get the heel in. And the ankle, the ankle sit. I even had to take my boot boot off earlier just to remember the ankles. Um, is it with the figurative painting? Um, a lot of times I, I have the figure clothed or with boots on. And the inside ankle, the inside of the foot, the ankle a little bit high, sit higher and then out here a little bit lower. This is just a fast sketch. Over here I, I placed another foot. This is the ankle. The inside of the foot, the ankle a little bit higher than the outside. Here I have two men uh, photographed uh, working with their hands, um, drawing hands, holding a book, uh, practicing hands. Um, just several sketches on a page, hands doing different things. And then later on we can um, anim or not animate, but uh, caricaturize those hands and with caricature, caricature, caricaturizing, uh, simplifying the hand and a lot of emotion with sale and some people talk a lot with their hands. Um, what else was I going to say about hands? Let's see, I got examples up here uh, for
foreshortening, I printed this off the web. You'll probably be able to find this. And, lay, and then after you get all of your lines laid in, uh, lighting, say my light's coming from here. So I know the shadow's gonna be underneath, underneath those fingers because it's gonna be in shadow. It's gonna be slightly in shadow. Shadow, shadow, shadow. And the light's going to hit up on top of the hand. And do a little bit of cross hatching, what I talked about earlier. This should look like it's in shadow. the same length as the hand if you put the or a little bit larger than the hand um, whenever let's see the hands for shortening uh, the elements of art we've talked about the line the value uh, later on I'll talk a little bit about color whenever I go into the portraiture um, and shapes, we got all kinds of shapes. Here, we create a column. Ah, doesn't want to write. But our hand, fingers and are made up of all kinds of cylinders. Say that that's the end of the thumb. a larger drawing of what's going on in this area. Uh, a lot of, it's good, a lot of practice. Um, oh yes, it comes to mind. The paint, uh, painting of God and Adam, I think Michelangelo, the hands coming together, man and God, oh, man up, I mean God up here and man, everybody, has, I mean not everybody, a lot of people have seen that, and I've seen it hanging in houses, uh, not even including the whole figure, but just the hands coming together. Very, uh, very expressive. Let's see, texture. What texture I can, uh, once we go into portraits here with the hand, uh, with the charcoal texture up here. I can smooth that out with vine charcoal. Say, I can blend it out very smooth. Um, well, no, we don't want to do hairy palms. I, I, was, I was thinking of doing hairy palms. But I can add shadow really quickly with vine charcoal or the side of a pencil if you're working with the side of a pencil. And over here, let's see, over here we got hands positioned down, down below, resting hands. You can see most of the fingers. But just remembering to keep it simple shapes. Um, Starting out with the, the larger shape of the hand. You're holding your hand up in a fist, of course. Oh, that's not going to mark on there. Your fist. I'm going to sketch the, the basic shape. And then I'll go back in and measure the proportions. And the thumb up here, I can do a stick thumb and then build out, build it out, and then add the fingers in. And it, as I'm sketching, I'm looking at my drawing and looking at my hand about the same amount of time. And 
mostly my hand. I'm looking at my hand as I'm moving my pencil or marker and then looking over to my board to see where I'm at. And just rough sketches like this. And it can, you get a feel of your form, you get a feel of the hand, and then right there. And it, it may look like a mess, but it, it's practice. I'm just playing around, and of course I noticed that part of my hand, I, once I move my hand, I can see a little bit of this finger up here in back of my thumb. And, and as I, and I'm just building up a mass of lines. Now I turn my hand. And that's the thing about uh, drawing your hand or your face. You, uh, you, after a while, you're gonna start tipping your hand like this and turning it. And that gives you a good idea of what the models go, what you go through with the model, because trying to get a model to stand in one position, especially if they have their arms up, like so, uh, after about 10, 15 minutes, they're gonna get tired and slowly their hands are gonna come down. And that's why in the beginning to get um, the basic lines down. Uh, the basic shapes, and then later on you can refine it because they might stay out, start out like this, but then after a while they're like this. Yeah. She moved her arm. Um, that happens. And uh, if you ever get a chance to take life drawing classes around here, the last time I took them, I'm sad to say that that was in Florida quite a few years ago. Um, but uh, uh, price-wise and everything, probably easier to go out there in the middle of the park, I mean a uh, park or somewhere where there's people passing by or sitting on benches just to draw them sitting and relaxing. That's, that's great. Or you want to invest in going to um, a life, uh, life drawing class. There's several in this area. Uh, they, they usually start out with warm ups and then later on uh, uh, drawing the, a little bit longer, 20 minute uh, or an hour. An hour you're going to find the figure either sitting or reclining uh, for about an hour. Okay, thank you. And I think I went a little bit over time. And uh, let's see, next week it'll be portraits. Thank you, Michael, Maria, and, and Arsenio, and see you next week. Thank you, bye-bye.